Let's head back to the Mo Betters broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU leading Western Kentucky by a score of 14 to 3. BYU football is brought to you in part by Bam Bam's Barbecue. Bam Bam's bringing you authentic Central Texas barbecue. Try our tender brisket or mouth-watering pulled pork. Bam Bam's Barbecue located just north of the BYU campus. Bam Bam's Barbecue, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics. I mentioned uh, fumbles being a problem for WKU. Western Kentucky's just lost tonight. It's 10th fumble of the season. That's 10 fumbles lost. BYU coming into tonight had only one fumble recovered on the season. It came late in the Navy game by Morgan Piper, so they've gone five straight games without recovering a fumble. I thought the chances were good that that might change tonight because of Western Kentucky's ball security issues. And sure enough, Isaiah Kafusi with uh, the recovery of the Gage Walker fumble moments ago. And so BYU now set up for a third down and two at the 31-yard line of WKU. Now, third and two has been a perfect down for BYU this year. Six for six in converting third down and two. They've all been runs, by the way. That perfect record makes up for the less than stellar record on third and one. Yeah. And so so does the performance on fourth down makes up for the less than stellar on third and one. But uh, interesting that they're so good on third and two. What a difference a yard can make. Just a yard, yep, yep. Almost yeah. A, uh, yeah, go ahead, Mitch. Yeah, real quick, just before too much time passes, on that fumble recovery, that was a true takeaway by Isaiah Kafusi. He was not the first person to dive after that ball, but when he came around with it, or came out uh, from the pile with it, that just goes to show you how much Isaiah Kafusi wants to help this team win. He went in there, stole the ball, took, took it, and gave BYU a chance to go up uh, and put some more points on the board. Mitchell Jurgens in the Zions Bank end zone. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you. Lopini Katoa to the right hip of Zach Wilson on third down and two. And the keeper by Zach is the first down. He slides after getting it just easily untouched. Needed two, got three and almost four to the right side. So, again, third and two stays a money down for BYU. That's seven for seven on the year. And all conversions coming on rushes. BYU first and ten now at the Western Kentucky 28-yard line. BYU first and ten between the hash marks, slightly toward the far hash. And officials have a brief timeout. What do we have here? What are they reviewing? Previous play is under review. The start of the slide, possibly, Greg, the spot the of the spot? ball. Well, I, he, I thought he clearly had the first down when he slid. I thought he was well beyond the line to gain. And, again, they will mark you at the start of the slide, but it seemed like Zach knew where he was headed on that one. That's also such a subjective, I mean, what huh. is the start of a slide? And he had plenty of room. Again, he might have started in a shade early. And if that's the case, it's going to go from a third and two conversion to a fourth and less than a yard. Yeah, most definitely. And so Western Kentucky may be wise to challenge, I guess, depending on what they adjudicate here. But, yeah, I, I, Zach appeared to have knew what he was doing. But what do they say? After reviewing the play... The runner's slide began at the 30-yard line. Therefore, it'll be fourth down and one to go. Fourth down. So Zach misjudged where the line to gain was. And that's the first failure on third and ten, third and two all year for BYU. He clearly had room. He could have gotten easily another yard before, before starting to slide. Yeah, they were in man coverage. And so when he pulled it and the defensive end had cleared across his face, he came out and it was the safety coming back, coming downhill at him from 10 yards deep. As you said, Greg, it was there at least another yard or two were there. But well, Now you now you got to get it. Now it's a fourth and one, and BYU was driving, and Zach had all kinds of time and room but slid a little early, as it turned out. Now he's in shotgun on fourth down and one from the Western Kentucky 30. He'll roll to the right, throw complete for a first down. No harm done as falling into the team area is Neil Pau as he was driven into the Western Kentucky sideline. So... Don't get it on third. They go for it on fourth. Another fourth down conversion for BYU. The Cougs two for two on fourth tonight. And the chains move. And no damage done by the early slide from Zach. And so now from the 23-yard line of Western Kentucky, BYU first and 10. Trips including Wake to the right. Wilson shotgun with Algier to his left hip. Now Wake will set up at the left tackle. Twins either side. Knee-high snap. A duck, a pump, a down, an in, and an incompletion. As he threw for Milne, and Milne had only one drop pass on the year coming in two tonight. Tough to say whether that's a drop or a pass breakup or an errant pass. How would you have judged it live, Riley? Yeah, it was down at his knees or below his knees. I I don't know that that, with the defender right on his back. I I think Dax will call it a drop. 
Yeah. Dax had two hands on it, and I think he'll say he should have had it. It was out in front of him, kind of low, but it goes as an incompletion. Second and ten from the WKU 23-yard line. Pistol formation now. Algier behind Wilson. He's got trips left. He turns and hands off to Algier. Surveys, follows way, keeps the legs churning. First down and more to the ten, to the nine, the eight, the seven. What a run from Tyler Algier. BYU set up first down and goal. Didn't appear to be a lot there. He made it happen. Tremendous patience and great job by Mason Wake to be his bulldozer, right? His road grader. Mason kind of got caught up as he was the he started in that H back position and crossed over to the left side B gap. He got tripped up a little bit, but he regained his balance, made a key block. Tyler was patient behind him and then showed burst after the block for another seven or eight yards. Patience, foresight, and power. Snap Zach handoff Tyler. Tyler slaloming his way from the seven to the five. The pile pushing to the four. Good push there at the end. They may spot him back at the five forward progress. Either way, short gain give him three. On first and goal from the eight, setting up now. Second and goal from the five-yard line. 13-10 to play until halftime. BYU looking to extend the lead that is currently 14-3. Got to give credit to this WKU defensive front. They have uh, held their own and and played pretty good. I mean, BYU averaging, uh, you've got Tyler with the big run that kind of brought the average up, but at the most part, it's been modest gains. Second and goal from the five. Wilson, shotgun, they vacate. Quarterback keeper for Zach. To the five, to the end zone. Touchdown! Cougars, Zach Wilson saunters in for six, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season, 12th rushing score of his career, and the Cougars make it 20-3 to with the PAT. Coming up. Really great play design there. So it was man blitz from Western Kentucky. So all of the defensive backs, everyone in the defensive secondary had their eyes on a man, and there was one guy left for the quarterback. Zach takes the ball, makes a pump to a bubble screen to the left, which got the guy who had who had responsibility for Zach, got his eyes over there, got distracted, started taking off towards the bubble screen. Obviously, he didn't let go of it, and then takes it around the right side for the score. PAT try from Oldroyd is up and good again. 69 consecutive PATs for Jake. One shy of time, the all-time BYU record. 12.45 to go until halftime. We'll take a break. Cougars 21, Western Kentucky 3. This is Cougar football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You're listening to BYU Football on BYU Radio. It is time now for another Utah Pork Producers Pigskin Scoring Summary brought to you by your Utah Pork Producers growing responsibly in Utah for over 25 years. For more information, visit utahporkproducers.org. BYU goes 39 yards, 227 off the clock. These are points off a turnover as they followed a Western Kentucky fumble in the final play in the drive, a five-yard Zach Wilson touchdown run. BYU 21 and Western Kentucky 3 is our score, 1245 to play. In quarter number two, this BYU team uh, just deadly efficient of late. Three touch, uh, three drives, three touchdowns as the Cougars open up the lead against the visitors out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky set on a hill in Bowling Green above the Barren River that runs through the city of Bowling Green, Kentucky. First time that the uh, Hilltoppers have come this far west as an FBS member. It's their first ever game in the Beehive State. We come back to a Jake Oldroyd kickoff from north to south, left to right as we see it, and you hear it. This one will be caught at the goal line and brought into the end zone for a touchback. Noah Whittington, reserve tailback, was back on the kickoff return. and will be out to the 25-yard line once again. Hilltoppers first down and 10. Zach Wilson's night so far, 9 of 13 for 122, a touchdown pass and a touchdown rush. His pass efficiency rating is 173.4. How good has Zach been this year? Well, 173.4 would be his lowest number all year if he were to stop playing right now. All right, Pigram is in the gun. Jakari Moses has come in for the first time at the right hip of Pigram. The handoff to Moses. And the Red Sea parts for Moses, who runs all the way out to the 34-yard line. A gain of nine on first and ten. So, Greg, obviously a good job by the back end of the defense and Zane Anderson to get that ball out, but that fumble on the previous possession came at the end of what was a 9- or a 10-yard run, and they followed it up here with an 8-yard run on first down. The BYU rush defense has to tighten up a little bit. They gave him 8, second down and 2. Moses stays in the game at the right hip of Pigram. Tyrell Pigram 
has played along with Kavaris Walker all the starts for Western Kentucky this year. Walker's unavailable tonight. Maybe Pigram all the way. If things go the Hilltoppers way more or less, regardless of the win-loss result, they might give Pigram the entire game to work with. We'll see how things transpire. It's a run on second and two of three. And the tackle by Daw at the end of the run by Moses moves the chains for the Hilltoppers. So Western Kentucky with its fourth first down of this game to BYU's eight. The clock at 11.52 and rolling. BYU's up 21-3. First and 10 Hilltoppers. Ball between the hashes at their own 36-yard line. And now we've got a flag. False start. Third false start of the game against WKU. Kevin Hassel's our referee. And he's yet to key the mic. There's some discussion now. That flag came from not traditional false start yeah, territory. It was, it was the umpire, which yeah. is situated in the middle of the defense by the linebackers. There is no foul on the play for false start. First down. Yeah. Again, the, the, from where the flag was thrown, that's not normally the guy in charge of that. And so uh, they had a discussion about what he thought he saw. Apparently he didn't see it because there's no flag. 11.45 to play until halftime. BYU's up 21-3, to and the Hilltoppers look at a first and 10. The play clock creeps under 20. Tight end and a wide receiver right. Double tight and a wide receiver right as the handoff goes middle. And not for much. As Moses took the handoff, Kafusi met him first. Isaiah Kafusi had the strip fumble recovery on the, ins- on the previous Western Kentucky possession. Limits the run to three. It'll be second down and seven. Moses stays in at tailback. The Hilltoppers, red jerseys, black pants, chrome, silver helmets, white numerals, BYU and the all-whites with blue numerals. And the accents for BYU are pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Man coverage on the left side. Double tight and a wide receiver to the right for Pigram. He looks right. Pressure coming from his right. Shuffles out to his left and throws it for a loss on the play complete. And the receiver there would have been advised to let it go. That's one of the old... (laughs) Yeah, it goes from second and seven to third and 12. It's a loss of five on the reception. Of course, the instinct is catch it, but it's for a loss. Well, that's one of the old things where you're trying to throw it at his feet, but he actually goes down and catches it for a loss for you. Those are just (laughs) deadly to the stats. You think he was actually chucking it to the dirt? He was was throwing it away. Yeah, he was trying to throw it, but he he (laughs) dove down and caught it, so oh well. He didn't dirt it well enough. No. All right, Moses had the catch for a loss of five. Third down and 12 now. The Hilltoppers did convert third and 11 earlier. So trips to the wide side, the right side. Pigram's in the gun. Will BYU bring some heat down? They're showing six at the line. They're going to bring six. The blitz comes. The lob down the near sideline. It is incomplete. It was in the hands of Trainer, and he couldn't haul it in. The coverage there from D'Angelo Mandel, and maybe a pass breakup for D'Angelo, but it was intended for the wide receiver, Therese Trainer, and he appeared to get two hands on it. Couldn't haul it in, but Mandel was there in good coverage and did make contact, and that may be a PBU for D'Angelo. Great coverage there by D'Angelo, especially it was that whole thing happened really fast. Pigram did a good job getting the ball out quick, not to get pass interference because he didn't quite get his head around. Uh, maintained good concentration, not interfered, but still broke up the pass. I think we give a PBU to D'Lo on that. Nicely done. First punt of this game. It's a low wobbler by Haggerty. It's going to be off a bounce, and Hobbs Nyberg will let it settle at the 17-yard line of BYU. So Cougar football after this. 9.55 to play until halftime. BYU 21-3 lead and getting the ball back next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. Let's go to the Mountain West Conference and up in Logan at the half. San Diego State leading Utah State by a score of 10-7. to 7. And earlier tonight, ahead of the matchup next week against BYU, number 25 Boise wins at Air Force 49-30. to 30. Back over to Lavelle Edwards Stadium in the Mo Betta's broadcast booth. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Thank you again, Jason Shepard. BYU fans, we invite you to find your perfect match at Ken Garf Volkswagen in Orem. With an incredible selection and great lease options, you're bound to find the car for you. Ken Garf Volkswagen, we hear you. 9.55 to play until halftime. BYU getting the football back with a 21-3 lead. And the Cougars have a habit this year of ripping off these runs of points that are pretty impressive. This is now the fourth time this season that BYU scored at least three consecutive touchdowns on three drives. Against Navy, and again here tonight, BYU has three touchdowns in three drives. Against Texas Tech, Tech and Louisiana, uh, Texas State and Louisiana Tech, BYU had sequences of four touchdowns in four drives. 
And the Cougars are looking to equal the four in four as we come back in with under 10 to go in quarter number two. Greg Rubel and Riley Nelson with you. Mitchell Jurgens down on the field and in the Zions Bank end zone. Zions Bank for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you. All right, following a punt that sets BYU back to its 18, 16-yard uh, line. 16-yard line officially. It's Wilson and the Cougs back out on offense. I expect to see a nice balanced attack coming out here on this long drive. I think they want to uh, get the run game going a little bit more. Obviously, Zach and the wide receivers are out doing their usual thing. If you take away Tyler Algier's uh, 32-yard run, Cougars are averaging 3.5 for carry. I think they want to bump that up a little. Wilson shotgun, handoff Algier on first down and 10. Squeezes his way through a very small hole off tackle left for a gain of two out to the 18-yard line. Reconfigured right side of the offensive line. The Cougars began with Hodge and Freeland at right guard and right tackle. Currently, it is Herring and Lachance right guard and right tackle for BYU. A very deep offensive line for the Cougars. 145 combined career starts coming in two tonight on that O-line. Make it 150 after tonight. BYU with a lengthy field facing it, but that hasn't daunted the Cougars yet this year. We'll tell you about that in a second. A quick play fake, and they throw near side, and that's a first down. Dax Milne with the down and out to the 29-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and BYU moves the sticks on second down and eight. BYU has scored 11 touchdowns in 17 possessions, requiring 80 yards or more this year. And the Cougars have begun this drive from at 16, now out to the 30, first down and 10. Dax Milne, another reception, four for 57 for Dax, four for 61 for Romney. A real master of his craft. That was just a simple down and out, 10-yard out, but he had the DB spin in circles. Wheat motions to tackle left. Empey the shotgun snap to to Zach. He takes the boot to the left, steps back, loads up, fires far side. High ball through the hands of Romney at the far boundary. That's a pass to Wilson's left, and it's sail. We've seen a few sail on Zach tonight to the sidelines. It's now 10-4-15 for Wilson for 134 and a score. This Western Kentucky front four is getting after it. They haven't really, they hit Zach the one time on the throw to Dax in the first quarter, but uh, they're bearing down on him, and it's forced Zach to rush some throws, which is causing him to be high on a couple of these that get further down the field. Second and 10, BYU at the Cougar 30-yard line. 21-3, to three, Cougs lead, 845 to go until halftime. They're in pistol. Screen run to the left, but for a loss on the play. Romney makes the catch. Loss of one to third down and 11. So we bubbled back toward Wilson and Western Kentucky all over it. So BYU seeing its first uh, third down trouble tonight. As the Cougs' earlier third downs were third and one, third and seven, third and one, third and two. BYU two for two on third. And the ones they've missed on, they've gained on fourth, but they wouldn't be going for it with a miss here. Third down and 11 for BYU at the Cougar. 28-yard line. Katoa and Finau are shotgun split backs. A pump and a... Ooh, that's a hospital ball. Dax Milne was set up on the down and in, and he was hit high and hard, and flags come out as Milne was slow to get up. Ooh, that just put Dax in a really rough position, and the Cougars may catch a break, not speaking for Milne here, but they may catch a break and move the sticks on some kind of personal foul. That was an incompletion on third and 11, and Milne was collided with very roughly on that in little slant about six yards upfield. What's the decision going to be here? A couple of flags fly, long conversation amongst the officials. The offense stays on the field for BYU. Here comes the call from Kevin Hassel. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass during the play. Personal foul targeting defense number two. That previous play is under review. Greg, this Western Kentucky defense even though despite what the numbers show that's really been just because they've been put in so so many tough situations by their own offense they fly around they play with good effort they're good up front and these defensive backs have not allowed i mean with the exception of a couple you got a good matchup on dax for the touchdown but every ball that's been on the outside has been contested uh, and then on that last slant route we see that they're not afraid to get physical either yeah and uh, overly physical looking at the first review I saw Devin Key clocks Milne in the jaw the the ruling of targeting is confirmed number two of the defense is disqualified the 15 yard penalty will be assessed from the previous spot first down so safety Devin Key is out of the game he hits Milne in the jaw with his helmet Dax did get up and 
is currently on the field, stays in the game. So toughness by Milne takes a hard hit that takes Key out of the game. And that's a key first down for BYU. Came on third and 11. And the pass where it caught would not have been for a first down. So BYU advances on the penalty. And now they go pistol with Katoa behind Wilson. First and 10 at the BYU 43-yard line. 21-3, Cougs lead. It's a boot and a straight drop back for Wilson. A step up, loads up. He's got Milne downfield. Milne awaits the ball and just beyond him. He gets one hand out to it, couldn't haul it in. And another flag flies this deep in the Western Kentucky secondary. Oh, yeah, the cornerback had uh, Dax's arm. He had completely grabbed it and pinned it down against his side. Pretty obvious pass interference there. So we back-to-back 15-yarders against the Hilltoppers. BYU moves the sticks again. Pass interference. Defense, number 29, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Results in an automatic first down. Key's been replaced by Simpkins, by the way, at that safety spot for Western Kentucky. BYU first and 10, 42-yard line of Western Kentucky. 7.55 to play until halftime. The Cougs up 21-3. Fourth penalty against the Hilltoppers, zero for BYU. In the pistol, Zach Wilson. Play fake, open in the left flat, Katoa, catch 35-30, 25-20, veers inside, 15-10, to the 5, he's going in, touchdown, 42-yard score, Wilson to Katoa, and the Cougars extend the lead. Getting the running backs involved in the passing game has always been a major strength at BYU, it's something that's part of our offensive culture and our tradition, great patience by Zach there, Uh, with all the games that Western Kentucky's been playing up front, I'm surprised that... And really, BYU hasn't sent a running back out into the route much, but often the linebacker can get lost in the shuffle, or I better said caught in the shuffle, and running backs can leak out uncovered. Sure enough, that's what happened to Lopini. As Zach, he just leaked out into the flat. Zach found him, and the rest was history. Jake Oldroyd on for the PAT. It's up and through. And with that PAT, Jake Oldroyd ties the BYU record for consecutive PATs at 70. Set by Justin Sorensen back in the day. 28-3, the Cougars, four touchdowns, four drives. We're taking a break on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head back to the Mo Betters broadcast booth and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU 28, Western Kentucky 3 is our score. Time for our latest pigskin scoring summary brought to you by your Utah pork producers. From the farm to your fork, Utah pork producers are committed to providing nutritious pork products to Cougar fans and families across the state. Visit utahporkproducers.org. And the latest drive is an 84-yard possession. Five plays, 211 off the clock. It ends in a 42-yard catch and run. Zach Wilson to Lopini Katoa. And yet again, another long 80-plus yard drive for BYU. The Cougars excel with these long fields and have now taken... A 7-3 game and have scored 21 straight to lead 28-3. And with that PAT, Jake Oldroyd, as we noted, uh, tying Justin Sorensen for the BYU consecutive PAT mark of 70 in a row. Jake last missed a PAT against Washington early last season. And that record was set from Sorensen over parts of three seasons, 2008, 2011, 2012. This kickoff from Oldroyd is uh, the shortest one of the night and returnable from the five-yard line, but a fair catch is called for so, fair catch, and will come out to the 25. Noah Whittington on the catch, and the fair catch it was. Well, I'm going back to that touchdown, Greg, uh, and I love to see when receivers block down the field. Um, that touchdown by Lopini was also, I mean, it helped when Keanu Hill was down here at the 10, 8-yard line, delivering a huge block for Lopini. Um, it's great to see those guys get involved even after the catch uh, to help anybody get into the end zone. And we'll call that catch our finish of the game, brought to you by the BYU Bachelor of General Studies. Be a finisher and learn more at bgs.byu.edu. It's a first and 10 run for Jakari Moses between the tackles for five yards on first down and 10 for WKU. That was quite the finish. It was a catch in the left flat, and Lopini took it about 40 yards all the way in for the score. Yeah, he cut back twice, once at about the 17-yard line and then another one just inside the 10, and those were wise cutback choices. Uh, to not get forced out of bounds and to finish the playoff in the end zone. Second down four. They gave Moses six on that first down run. 7-14 to go until halftime. The high shotgun snap to Pigram. And stumbling on his way out of tackles is Moses to the left side. That was on second and four, and he got 
two. So third down and two coming up for WKU. Troy Warner, the tackle of Moses. Under seven now to go until halftime. And BYU pulling away from the Conference USA visitors out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Western Kentucky trailing 28-3. to three. Third and two for WKU at the Hilltopper 33-yard line. The Hilltoppers go right to left as we see it and you hear it. BYU shows five at the line. Now a stop and check with me as the play clock gets under 10 with Pigram in the gun. Gage Walker to his right diagonally behind him. The handoff is to Walker, and Walker got the first down. First down and more out to the 38-yard line. Gain of five on third down and two. The Hilltoppers move the sticks for a sixth time to BYU's 12 first downs on the night. BYU two of four on third downs, and on the ones they missed, they did convert on fourth down. Possession time is about dead even, and the scoreboard far from it. And the yardage total, far from it. 243-95 to 95 is the yardage tally, and 28-3 to 3 is our score. First and 10 Hilltoppers at their 38-yard line. A play fake, and on the seam, catches Mello. It's incomplete. A pass breakup as Joshua Simon appeared to have it in his hands, but he was rocked on the play, and it goes as an incomplete pass down near the BYU 40-yard line. Great hit there by Troy Warner coming in on the seam route. He was... Uh... He was right there, obviously not in time to break up the pass, but in time enough to lay a pop on the wide receiver and jar the ball loose. loose. So second and 10, Western Kentucky at the Hilltopper 38-yard line. Pigram awaits in the gun. He's got Walker slightly behind him again to his right. Trips to the right, single wide left, handoff, Walker into a pile of people at the 40-yard line. Just buried his helmet and tried to get what he could, which is only two yards in this case. 5.50 in the clock rolling toward the interval. It is third down and eight, so a chance for BYU to get the ball back here before the end of the half, let the uh, sticks stop moving for the visitors. 40-yard line, the spot of Western Kentucky. Third down and eight. BYU in facing third and eight this year has allowed only one conversion on eight tries. BYU brings four. Pigram settles. Pass underneath. Complete to trainer and won't get the first down. Needed to get eight and at the hash mark got five. And so now it's decision time for Western Kentucky. Fourth and three. Trailing by 25 at your own 45. And the decision is punt team. John Haggerty is in for WKU. So the BYU offense will get the ball back under five to go in half number one, and we'll see if the Cougars can keep their uh, string going. So far, it's been four possessions, four touchdowns for BYU. All right, John Haggerty, his second punt, averaging 44 yards a punt coming in two tonight. Snap back to Haggerty at his chest. Pulls it down. This one's short and away from Hobbs Nyberg, but a WKU bounce inside the 15 all the way down to the 12, and so another long field facing BYU. 88 yards from the end zone. Will the Cougars be on offense as Zach Wilson and his colleagues re-enter the field of play? Haggerty's two punts. Let's see. They gave him, I think he had 50 on the first. Not sure what they've called on the second punt. Officially with the yardage down to the 12-yard line. 43 on the second. So, BYU first and 10 at the 12 with 436 to play. Until halftime, Cougs up 28-3. Trips to the right side, a single wide to the short side, left side for Zach Wilson. He's at the far hash, the left hash. He pumps. A little shovel underneath is incomplete. So a little uh, push pass into traffic. It falls to the ground. It'll be second and 10, BYU at the... 12-yard line. Not much opening up there on that play. Yeah, uh, the listeners may have heard me sign to the mic there. Sorry for that, Greg. But there was a def- the defensive end was not fooled and standing right next to Algier. And uh, it was a little too close for comfort for me. So Wilson shotgun second and 10 now back at the BYU 12. Algier is the tailback to the right hip of Zach. Zach will look option to the right. Pitch back to Tyler. Tyler gets a block from Pau'u. Frees him to the boundary and may have got the first down. Needed 10 and he he got 9. It'll be third. Oh, it's another third and one. All these tantalizing third and ones. (laughs) Real stingy with the spot there. I thought... uh... He could have easily given... Oh, oh and now they're moving the yeah, sticks. they did. Yep. They did. It took them a while yep. to do it, but they did. Where the spot was initially didn't look good. Then they do put it at the line to gain. So nice play there. That's a second and ten run for Tyler Algier. Algier having a nice night. Just look at this. 68 yards on eight carries right now, including a touchdown run. 
Long gain for Tyler, 32 yards tonight. Wilson's under center, one of the rare times for him. Deep handoff to Algier. Runs into a stiff opposition right at the 25-yard line. Meeting him was Eli Brown, and it'll be a gain of three to the 25. Greg, Western Kentucky has just decided that they are not going to let BYU establish or any kind of... I, Algiers has done a great job, but most of his success has been found on the edges. His 32-yard run was on a toss, and then that last 10-yard gain was on that pause option play. But up the gut, they are committed to always having an extra man in the box who, who was the one that made the tackle on Tyler on that last play. Cougs go pistol. Motion wake to trips right, including double tight right. Algiers behind Wilson in the gun. The turn by Zach. The boot. The step up, the throw on the run. He's got a man deep in double coverage. Oh, the catch is not made. It's incomplete. Pounding his fist on the grass is Keanu Hill. That Hill, w- oh, Hill was deep down the middle, sandwiched by WKU defenders, but by his reaction and by how Zach dropped it in, it might have been caught even between two defenders. Well, like you talked about earlier with Dax on that throw that was a little bit low, he had two hands on it. Keanu had, although he did have a defender draped all over his back, uh, I, I don't think it was interference, just good coverage. He did have both hands on the ball and failed to secure the catch throughout the entire process. Would have been a big gainer right there. Cooks haven't punted yet. They will if they don't get the first down here. Third down and seven. At the BYU 25, 3.05 to play until halftime. Cougs up 28-3. Zach Wilson in the gun. Three-step turns into a five-step. Pressure comes. He steps up, looks to evade, shakes off a tackle, and throws incomplete. Yep, there's just too much pressure on Zach, and he threw as he was being hit. And now the Cougs may get bailed out. A flag flies late in the play. In fact, even after the play, BYU player clapping his hands downfield. That's Dax Milne. He appeared to see exactly what the officials saw. A flag flew, and Dax thinks it's good news for BYU, and the Cougs would get a break on a third down incompletion if this call stands. But again, as most things are these days, they're heavily discussed amongst all the officials. Maybe a holding flag that came in late. I didn't see much extracurricular activity after the play. Of course, if something it The was only thing said, that saves Western Kentucky here is an uncatchable pass. Yeah. The ruling on the play is an incomplete pass. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number nine. That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Results in an automatic first down. Yeah, he got into it with Milne. Milne was pretty con- uh, pretty content that the call would go against Bradshaw, and that's exactly what happened. So that's another penalty for Western Kentucky. They're really hurting themselves. Five penalties for 55 yards here in the first half. BYU first and 10, and they were about to punt the ball away without that unsportsmanlike play. Three-step drop for Wilson. Cocks the ball. Now pulls it down and takes off. Midfield, 40 Western Kentucky. 30, oh, takes a hard hit high at the end of that play. He had to get down, and the defender kind of sailed over him, but caught a bit of him too. So to the 35, big gainer from Zach Wilson, and BYU first and 10 with 2.45 to play until halftime. The penalty Setting BYU up for a big Wilson takeoff. 25-yard run for Zach. Takes the thigh-high snap. Throws to his right. Catch made at the boundary by Milne. He's hog-tied near the line to gain. Give him 11. Needed 10, got 11 on first and 10. BYU moves the sticks again. The Cougars in scoring territory. 2.30 to play until halftime. 28-3 the score. The Cougars go tempo. Zach back in the gun. Snap. Play fake. Sidearm to Rex. Complete inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Gain of 7 on that little fling by Zach Wilson. Boy, yeah, Rex just uh, get him the ball quick. He sidesteps one defender and falls forward for seven. Real uh, easy gainer there. Trips to the right. The run is to, no, a takeoff for Wilson to the left. One-on-one and can't get past the defender staring him square in the eyes. And it's a gain of just one on third and short to second down and three. Trey Meadows with the tackle for Western Kentucky. So BYU facing another third down. This down a third and two. And again, the Cougars had been perfect on third down and two this season until tonight. They did miss on a third and two, got it on fourth and short. The early slide got him earlier in the game. Yep. Indications where it was kind of a weird spot because he appeared to have plenty of room. They're looking at shotgun split backs for the second time tonight. Third down and two from the WKU 17-yard line. Now Katoa goes to the right flat, takes the swing pass on the right flat. 
makes the catch, has the first down, gets to the 10-yard line. They're yanking at the ball. He falls into the, inside the 10 with the football and a first down on third and two, a gain of eight to the nine. First and goal for BYU from the nine. And the Cougars with 1.15 to go until halftime have all their timeouts left and can plan well to get in for six here. Katoa had me nervous there. He made a great move to cut back on the defender, but he was a little loose with the football on the cutback, which is why they were grabbing at it. I thought for a second there they may have been able to get a hand between him and the ball, but sure enough he had the strength to pin it against his body. A good accurate throw by Zach on the swing pass and a good move by Lopini in the open field. 50 seconds to go until halftime. First and goal from the nine. Zach in the gun with Algier to his left hip. Pau'u motions all the way to wide right, tight end and wide left, tight end also to the right, boot to the left for Zach, rears back, throws short of the intended receiver in the end zone, incomplete near the pylon. That was intended for Dax Mill and just didn't get to him. Yeah, so that, second goal from the nine. The comeback in the end zone, you got to be. There's not a lot of room to work with, and obviously a comeback route works mostly because the DB is scared to get beat deep. But when the ball's on the nine yard line, he's not scared to get beat deep. So you got to let the ball go before Zach let the ball go well before Gunner was out of his break, and the timing just wasn't quite there. Second and goal from the nine. Ball on the right hash. They go to pistol now. Algier behind Wilson. Chest high snap to Zach to give to Tyler. Tyler to the 10. Tyler to the 8. Helmet pops off on the hit. And three flags fly. That could be another target for Western Kentucky. If that's helmet to helmet, that'll set BYU up even closer to the goal line. Yeah, first it, down. I think it might have been ripped off by an invert by a face mask. So either way, the helmet of Tyler Algier was yanked off or popped off. And he'll leave the field for a play. You hope he's okay. And with 31 seconds to play in quarter number two the officials discuss flags on the field face mask there by a passing d lineman it looked like on the tv replay so the uh hilltoppers bedeviled by the penalty flags here in the first half byu penalty free personal foul face mask on the defense number five that fifth half the distance to the goal automatic first down number 25 may remain in the game so to the four-yard line, and the Cougars will need to look at the timeout situation. They can run with impunity here. There are 31 seconds remaining, all their timeouts. First and goal from the four. How much time will BYU need? Correction. The foul was on player number 50. 50. All right, Wilson steps into the huddle with his guys, the white-clad Cougars, Cougars, the black and red-clad Hilltoppers. Katoa to the left hip of Wilson, and now whistles and timeout to BYU. So Zach was ready timeout. to go. But they'll talk it BYU, over. BYU, this is their first charge to the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. And who knows how much longer this particular starting well, group will stay operator, in the game. Set the clock to 31 seconds, please. 31 seconds on the clock. BYU's looking to pitch a, a perfect half, Thank offensively you. at least. This is a fifth possession. And the Cougars looking to make it 5-for-5 five five with touchdowns. And the odds are good from the four-yard line. First down and goal. The way the Cougars have been running it, 6.4 yards per rush right now for BYU. Timeout on the field, so we'll take it. Final break of the first half. 31 seconds to go until halftime. 28-3, BYU leading Western Kentucky. And the Cougars first and goal from the four right after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. All right, so what will the Cougars decide to do on first and goal from the four? Well, here's a Smart decision, the UCCU 4321 Cash Back Rewards Card, which gives you more cash back on the spending you do the most. UCCU, love where you bank. BYU in its fifth possession of half number one, looking for its fifth touchdown of half number one. Cougars 28 and Western Kentucky 3. Zach Wilson has been so good this year that uh, his 15 for 24 night feels wildly inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> he came into tonight having completed 78% of his passes on the season. 78%, 15 for 24 tonight, puts him at only 62.5%. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Really slacking. But he's, but he's bailed himself out with two touchdowns to no interceptions. He has 199 passing yards as well and a rushing touchdown. Here comes Zach and the Cougars back out on the field. It's Lopini Katoa to the left hip. Uh, Wilson, he's got the big three, Pau, Milne, and Romney to the left. Milne now motions to the right, back to the left. Zach will roll to the left. Throw for the end zone, and it's bobbled incomplete. Not caught cleanly. 
by Neil Pau, who the intended receiver seemed to bounce off his chest in the end zone. Yeah, it's one of those. So, look, w- whenever you're in traffic, which he was, you, it's okay to catch against your body, but it's kind of like you catch with your hands first with your body. Rather, he let it hit his chest first and then tried to secure it with his hands. Never seems to work as well that way. So not an inaccurate pass. It probably should have been caught. Was not. And now it's second and goal from the four. Wilson will set, fire, lob right side, looks for Rex and can't double clutch it for the score. So incomplete there on second down and goal from the four. So BYU comes out first and goal from the four. Pass that probably should have been caught, was not. Second one, tougher catch to make and a pass break up with Rex in the right side of the end zone. Now third and goal from the four, 21 seconds to go until halftime. So the Cougars are good bet to score on every possession here in the first half, but will it be five possessions, five touchdowns? We have third and goal from the four. Timeout again to BYU second of three. Timeout. BYU, their second charge to the half. 30 seconds in length. BYU with 308 total yards here in the first half, and we'll have to call that a good pass breakup on the pass intended for Rex. Beanie Bishop got a hand in to knock it away. So the first one went to Pau'u incomplete, second to Rex incomplete, now third down and goal from the four. The only question now becomes, does BYU consider it four down territory, or do they say now we'll take points if we don't make it here and try a field goal to end the half. BYU 3 of 6 on third downs tonight, looking at a third and goal from the four. We are coming to you from the Mo Betis broadcast booth here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I had some more Mo Betis this week. That was our pre-show meal for the uh, BYU Football with Kalani Sitake broadcast on Tuesday night. I had the uh, pulled pork and the chicken. No, pulled pork and the steak this week. The teriyaki sauce, white rice, smack salad, so good. We're in the Mobetta's broadcast booth bringing you third and goal from the four for BYU. Cougs up 28-3, 21 seconds to go until halftime. Again, end zone, again to Rex, and this one's hauled in for the score! Touchdown to Isaac Rex, and the Cougars make it 34-3 with the PAT coming up. Five possessions and five touchdowns in a perfect offensive half for BYU. Rex had Bishop on him again, who broke the play up, broke the pass up on the play previous. Uh, on that time, Zach lofted the ball a little bit more, which allowed Bishop to time his jump that as Isaac was coming down with the ball, he jumped up and was able to uh, get his hand between Isaac's hands and bullet out. This time, it was much more of a bullet, kind of the back shoulder uh, to the high left ear of Isaac Rex. The DB had no shot at breaking it up for the score. That's our new skin. Beautiful catch of the night brought to you by New Skin. Discover the best you. Zach Wilson to Isaac Rex for the four-yard touchdown. The PAT from Jake Oldroyd is up and good. And with that, Jake Oldroyd has set a brand new BYU record for consecutive PATs, 71 and counting. All by himself in the history books now is Jake Oldroyd. Jake the make does it again. 35 to 3. BYU's up 32. 16 seconds to go until halftime. Let's get you our Utah Pork Producers Pigskin Scoring Summary. It is brought to you by your Utah Pork Producers. Utah Pork Producers committed to farming responsibly and ethically. Visit utahporkproducers.org under We Care. And that drive, 15 plays. Another long one, 88 yards this time, 420 off the clock. The most plays in a scoring drive for BYU this season right there. 15 to get in for six. And the Cougars now with 312 yards, 35 points, 35-3. The top 10 Cougs with some style points in addition to some on-the-board points here in the first half, Riley. Yeah, I think that last touchdown might be the difference of had they not got in and kicked a field goal, I think we maybe would have seen the first unit again. I'm not so sure that we'll see the first unit in the second half. That's all speculation. I, we'll, we'll see there. But that drive was tremendous. They got they got. Bailed out a couple of times by Western Kentucky penalties, but regardless, uh, each one of those was merited, and they did the execution to be able to get the ball across the end zone before halftime. Kickoff return, Whittington, and Whittington is turned around and dropped down outside the 25 to the 27-yard line. 11 seconds to go until halftime. WKU with the football down 35-3. to It was a 7-3 to ball game, and since then, 28th straight for BYU. Yeah, and Western Kentucky's offense has not even sniffed the end zone since that first drive. That first drive was so methodical, and they took their time, and they were looking at the sideline a lot of times. BYU, as they've done all season, has made great defensive adjustments and really kept Western Kentucky from even crossing midfield after that first drive. Zane Anderson a little hobbled on that last special teams play. Western Kentucky will take a knee 
on first and 10 from the 27. That's going to end the half. BYU 35, Western Kentucky 3 is our halftime score. We'll stay at field level as Mitchell Jurgens will be catching up with BYU head coach Kalani Sitake for his halftime comments. Before Kalani's comments, Riley, what are some of yours? Well, you mentioned that Zach's hovering around 60%, which is, you know, good for most every other quarterback, but uh, a little bit less than average for him. That's due to two things. This Western Kentucky front has played with great effort and has been in his face. They've only hit him once, but they've been around him, putting a lot of pressure on him. And then secondly, a lot of physical man defense being played by this back end. Dax and Gunner and Neil and the crew are handling it pretty well, but uh, it's caused for a, a few more incompletions than we're used to seeing. So BYU doing it uh, yet again, going on a scoring spree. And for the first time this season, the Cougars score five touchdowns on five consecutive drives. Now down to Mitchell Jurgens and Kalani. Coach, Coach, great half. Uh, Five offensive possessions, five touchdowns. Talk about what's going right for the offense tonight. Yeah, it's it's going well, but I'd like to see us win more on on first and and, uh, second down. We had a high number of third and shorts, and we got to capitalize on that. But uh, I think overall, you know, we we were we were kind of fortunate with some of the stuff targeting, kept the, the drive going. We had a, um, a late hit or something like that. So like that that stuff has been gifted to us. But we got to do more as a team in the, in the second half, uh, winning first down on offense and defense. Yeah, on defense on the defensive side, you had a little bit of trouble stopping the run, um, but the defense has done a tremendous job keeping Western Kentucky out of the end zone. Um, what's been the overall? What, what's been your overall assessment of the defensive performance today? I didn't hear much of that because Greg's voice in the background is, is on the loudspeaker. So, sorry. I, I'm just going to say that you know we just got to play sound defense and offense. We we had some mistakes. I uh, like the way the team's playing. Can't complain about the score, but I like to see us play better in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Good. I half. appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and yes, it wasn't my voice interrupting him. My, they're playing it over the loud. So there are a couple yeah. of plays on the uh, the PA system. I'm, nothing intentional on my part, believe me. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Thank you, uh, Kalani and Mitchell Jurgens. Halftime recap next here on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. The first half is complete. This is Cougar Halftime Live. Let's join your host, Jason Shepard. Another dominating first half for the BYU Cougars. They lead Western Kentucky after two quarters, 35-3. to three. Coming up on Cougar Halftime Live, Blaine Fowler will join me. We'll discuss the first half, get Blaine's thoughts on the first half of play. We'll also update you on the night in college football. We'll let you know what's going on in Logan between San Diego State and Utah State, plus the full day in top 25 college football. Before that, though, let's get you back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Thanks very much, Jason Shepard. BYU 35, Western Kentucky 3 at halftime. Here's the scoring recap. BYU got the ball first after Western Kentucky won the toss, elected to defer. The Cougars take their opening possession, go 75 yards over 10 plays, and 4 minutes and 22 seconds into this drive, we heard this. Snap, Zach, turn hand off Tyler. Tyler stutter step, leaning, leaning, pushing, trying to get there, leans the ball across the plane. Touchdown is the signal. Touchdown, Cougars. And Tyler Algier is in for 6. So BYU 7 nothing with uh, 10.38 to play in the opening quarter. Western Kentucky's first touch saw the Hilltoppers go 14 plays, only 49 yards. It took 8.14 off the clock to kick a field goal, making the score 7-3. to And from then it was all BYU. The Cougars' next touch, again from the, 70, uh, from the 25-yard line. It's a 75-yard drive, six plays, 2.02 off the clock, and the drive ends this way. Play fake, drop back. Look, look, fire for the end zone. Cut! Here he goes! Dax Mill for the score! Grab it inside the five and into the end zone for six. Dax Mill makes it 13-3 with the PAT coming up. 14-3 BYU after the PAT. 22 seconds were remaining in the first quarter. Then it was a fumble by Western Kentucky on the ensuing Hilltopper drive, and BYU took it 39 yards in from there, over eight plays, two and a half off the clock, and the final play was this play. Second to goal from the five. Wilson, shotgun. They vacate. Quarterback keeper for Zach. To the five, to the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars! Zach Wilson saunters in for six. His seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Twelfth rushing score of his career. And the Cougars make it 20-3 with the PAT. Coming up. That was with 12.45 to go until halftime. The ensuing Western Kentucky possessions a punt. Back over to BYU, 84-yard field, takes five plays and 2.11 off the clock. Another short span time-wise of a drive. It ends this way for BYU. Zach Wilson 
Play fake. Open in the left flat. Katoa. Catch 35-30. 25-20. Veers inside. 15-10. To the 5. He's going in. Touchdown! 42-yard score. Wilson to Katoa. And the Cougars extend the lead. 21st career touchdown for Lopini Katoa. Another Western Kentucky punt giving BYU one more look in the first half. So it's five possessions and five touchdowns as over four minutes and 20 seconds the Cougars go 88 yards this time in 15 plays. A season-long drive and number of plays. The final play was this one. 21 seconds to go until halftime. Again, end zone. Again to Rex. And this one's hauled in for the score. Touchdown to Isaac Rex. And the Cougars make it 34-3 with the PAT coming up. Five possessions and five touchdowns in a perfect offensive half for BYU. And the PAT from Jake Oldred was his 71st in a row, a brand-new BYU record. And for Isaac Rex, touchdown number four on the season and the career And that equals the number of touchdowns Matt Bushman hauled in last year for BYU. Four on the season. Okay, BYU quickly a yardage advantage of 312 to 100. 203 to 36 passing. 109 to 64 rushing it. The penalties were six for Western Kentucky to zero. Yes, zero for BYU. The Cougars three to one in uh, touchdowns. 18-6 on the first down tally. The possession time, BYU by a bit, but the yards per play advantage to BYU by quite a bit. 7.1 to uh, to 2.8 yards per play as the Hilltoppers snapped only 26 plays in the first half. Zach Wilson, 16 of 27, 203, three touchdowns, no picks. Passer rating 159. Tyler Algier led on the ground, 10 carries, 72 and a score. Dax Milne, five grabs, 67 and a score. Western Kentucky, Tyrell Pigram, 7 for 10, 36 yards is all. 48 rushing yards for Walker, 31 receiving yards for Xavier Lane. And your halftime score once again is BYU 35 and Western Kentucky 3. Now it is time for Cougar Halftime Live and back at BYU Radio with Blaine Fowler. It's Jason Shepard.